Hello everybody, Flick here and welcome to Let's Chat, my weekly vlog series posted every Monday at lunchtime if you're in the UK. I'm recording this one a little bit short notice, more so than I usually do because I've been quite busy. Also being a little bit choked up with hay fever as you might be able to tell. I get a couple of the rare symptoms, fatigue and headaches and put that along with the normal stuff like a itchy throat and sore eyes and you don't really feel in the mood to do much of anything. That and also my backlog my, well, my backlog of videos is fine, but my upload speed is being strained by Bloodborne plus Scholar of the First Sin. So I'm having to work around that at the moment. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about that. This will probably a bit of a, be a bit of a quick one so that my upload speed is, you know, kept... Well, it has nothing to do with speed. So that the pressure on my upload is kept to a minimum by keeping this video short so it doesn't interfere with the rest of the videos due up on the Monday that you'll be seeing this. And other than that, I have some Patreon shoutouts to do for last month, and then also I have one thing to talk about, and then I'll quickly go through the comments on last week. But also, before I forget, I got some fan art from Shulls of my character in Bloodborne. I think it was done with pastels and watercolour, you'll be seeing it now on the screen if you want to take a look. I think she captured the mood of the game fantastically in that picture, and I hope you'll agree. It's not the first bit of fan art she's done, if you want to see some more I will try and remember to link her Tumblr I think it was, maybe? Well either way she's also on Twitter and I retweeted it on that as well so you can catch it on there if you missed it. But yeah, let's get on with the Patreon shoutouts. This is for the people who supported me last month and remember if you do support me this month you have a chance to win my sealed copy of Bloodborne, the, the retail one that I bought before I knew I was getting a review copy. But anyway, allow me to load up my list here. There we are. And say thank you to the following people. Carnares, Taya Blake, Apropos of Nothing, Dragonakis, Matsumuni, Toby Jones, Colson McDonnell, Gary, otherwise known as CR, Good Rory, Osti Calio, Nick Galaldi, Michael Smith, Moose, Thaxton, Nick M, Grant Doty, Michael Millward, Amy Spain, Ryan Swirlera, Fraser Macbeth, Casper MH, James Kilgore, Terrell Smith, Calvin Schmidt, and that one guy with the face. I always enjoy putting his name last because I think it's just a perfect end to that list of names. It's just, it's a fantastic logon name, incidentally. So thank you to everybody. Greatly appreciate it. And yeah, you're, as long as you're all still patrons by the end of April, you're all in with a shot. You're free to take it, by the way, even if you don't plan to play it, but I'd prefer that someone who's actually going to play it gets it. But, you know, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, that's that out of the way. So let me just, my face is going to turn pale because I'm bringing up the comment section. See, I can see it in the preview monitor. It just it turns me as white as a ghost. I'm, I'm honestly not as white as it looks like I am now. I mean, you can tell, like, minimize the window. That's a bit more natural skin color. But then you just go, whoa! It's like I suddenly got a fright. <laughs> anyway, the thing I wanted to talk about briefly, because it's not happening yet, is that YouTube is bringing a site-wide ad-free subscription model. A la kind of like, uh, it's not, what's it called on Twitch? Twitch Turbo, I think where you, pl you pay a monthly subscription and you get no ads across the whole site. But, unlike if you're using Adblock and whatnot, you still support the content creators you like because the revenue will be split. It's the same split as the ads that Google does, so it's 55% to the content creator. But then it does something a bit weird where they're planning on splitting it based on your viewership. So let's say that, I don't know how much they would charge, but let's say it's like $10 a month, something like that. And you say you watch 50% of my videos and 40% of someone else's and 10% of someone else's, the share that goes to the content creator is split in that percentage to everybody. Will that equal more money in the end? Per individual person, maybe, because per individual view and ad view is like, it's literally cents. It's, it's technically worthless by itself. So it's very interesting. They're planning on bringing it out sometime this year, as early as that. No date yet though, no statement on how much it is. But I think it's actually a very good thing because I know that there are some people who just are, find ads so abhorrent that they will not watch them, they will not even let them play by using a program that blocks them. But they still want to support ad, um, content creators in any way they can. This would be the perfect way, just like on Twitch. You don't like the ads on Twitch? Get Twitch Turbo. It still credits the content creators on Twitch as if you would saw the ads. So this is YouTube you know, copying them, basically. But copying them in a good way. I think it might work out for the best because you as the viewer will get ad-free viewing, but you also can feel good about yourself because you know that you're still supporting the people you're watching without having to do anything, basically. So I think it's a really good idea. I hope they actually roll it out real soon and at least test it. 
and it's, it's optional. So if you don't buy a site-wide subscription, it'll carry on as is, as far as I understand. Very early, there's new partner terms going out to people who are just like directly partnered with YouTube. So if you are in that situation, you'll be getting them to read. I've read them kind of like third hand via Reddit so far. So I'm not sure it'll affect multi-channel networks either. That's quite interesting, but I guess we'll see. So that's all I want to talk about next time. Could have some Japanese candy to show off and maybe also some weird beef jerky related stuff I ordered from the site I usually just bulk buy my, my jerky from. But anyway, there is quite a few comments to get through, so let's get started. Dragonica said Bearded Master Race. He also pointed out that because I don't like haggis, he's going to unsub. I didn't say I didn't like it, I just said it wasn't really for me. I mean, the pizza I had with haggis on it, I ate it. Pardon me, sorry, I had my lunch a little while ago. A late lunch, actually. I, I didn't hate it. I would have it. I, I think I, I did actually say last time I would have had it again. I just wouldn't go out of my way to have it. So, resub. Also, happy birthday. Uh, Fraser River also says he agrees. Besides, I need my beard to protect me. Oh, this wasn't in relation to the haggis thing. I need my beard to protect me in the harsh British Columbian wilderness. You know, while I chop down trees and wrestle bears. Like all Canadians, yes. I know a few Canadians. Liam Fair says you should do a bedroom tour focused on all the cool stuff in the background. I wouldn't mind bringing some stuff closer for you to have a look at, but all the, all that stuff is dusty as hell. Every like half a year or something, I take it all down and dust it because I'm a nerd. But I think I pointed out before, like that's Transformers, that's Gundam, and then like that shelf is all anime stuff and some gaming stuff like um, I've got a Zidane statue and, and Sora, there's like a Naruto one, a Nichigo one, a Ryuk one, a Vegeta one. And then the bottom shelf is some big 40k miniatures that I can't store properly and aren't painted yet, so I just leave them up there to be on display. And that's just a pile of books. <laughs> it's just books, and uh, that's White Dwarfs right there. Other than that, there's nothing much to see, but if you see anything in particular on those that you want a better look at, you let me know and I can bring it closer. I don't have time to do a game from my retro box this time, but I'll, I might do it next time if I don't have one of those other things to show off. Uh, Spherical Cube, this is again talking about 40k, the new army they were adding, saying that it is a sub-codex. Which means, if you aren't aware, it's kind of like, it's not a full release, it's like additional rules that can be mixed with other existing armies. And we get into some really nerdy stuff there, so I'll skip that a little bit. I have read it though. And then you go on to talking about concerning the whole pizza business. So both pineapple and haggis are acceptable toppings, but fish toppings is not. Words fail me, they really do. Uh, I don't agree that pizza, uh, pineapple rather, is an acceptable topping on pizza. Same with fish. But pineapple falls into this weird category of food for me where carrots is in this category as well. I will eat it raw. Raw carrots, pineapple just, you know, pineapple, absolutely fine. Cook them, however, no way. I'm, I've never eaten, or rather I have in the past, but never will eat again a cooked carrot. I hate it. I hate how it changes the texture. Same with pineapple. I hate the soggy wetness of warm pineapple, it's horrible. But yeah, pineapple raw, totally fine. Or you know, in a, in a tin with the juice and whatnot, that's fine too. Raw carrot is fine. Carrot on carrot cake, that's fine. Cooked carrot while it's warm, absolutely not. Can't eat it, makes me feel sick. Weird. Oh, Shul's actually commented, I really enjoy watching your Bloodborne videos and I, since I can't play it, keep it up. That would explain why you did the very nice art that I showed off earlier. Thank you very much again. Toby Jones says he thinks that poutine is chips, cheese and gravy, unlike what I thought it was, which was macaroni cheese, or what we call it in the UK, macaroni cheese. I think Massimini answered in a couple of comments time, so we'll go back to that. Next, Paul Boner. Haggis is not something you'll find easily, but you can find it in the United States. There's an awesome international market in Ohio called Jungle Gyms that has almost every meat, spice, vegetable and candy from all around the world. That sounds like the kind of place I would absolutely love to just visit and try stuff. Since people from around the world visit the States, it's common to find international markets in larger cities. Also, haggis sounds terrible, I have to try it. If you genuinely do try it, let me know how you think about it, or what you think about it after you've eaten it. Also, curse having to wait till Tuesday to play Dark Souls 2. Oh yeah, that's because the console releases were delayed and for whatever reason they decided, eh, let's just release the PC version now. Don't, no, we won't even tell anybody. Just just do it. It's fine. Always a pleasure, Flick. I enjoy your content. Thank you very much. I will thumb you coming up now. Grinning L next. Oh good, somebody else already talked about poutine. I was afraid I was going to be the food guy. I knew to a certain extent that you'd choose Maya the Titsukabra. Just be aware that her croaks will alert the neighbours from several zones over. That is very true. 
I'd hoped you would choose the Gignox, but alas, all the love of the Gignox would have given would have remained unreciprocated. Sorry, my brain broke a little bit there because I saw the word Gignox. I'm not going to thumb your comment up. Gignox is horrible. Kezu might be worse. I'm not sure. Ah yeah, here we go. Here's Matt Smoonie's comment now. Poutine is actually French fries, or chips as we call them here. With cheese... Oh, I was right about the curds. Cheese curds and gravy on top. It's rather amazing. Sometimes restaurants will change it up and throw some pieces of chicken breast in there too to make it even better. I think I want poutine, uh, poutine now drool. I'm also really enjoying your Bloodborne playthrough and the revisit to Dark Souls 2. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. I would try poutine. It sounds quite interesting. So it's just... We have a thing... It's not a, a fine dining thing here. From chippies. You know, like that's what we call chip shops here. We, we just get chips and cheese. And we also get chips and curry and chips and gravy. Which is just what you would call French fries with something dumped on it. Be it curry sauce, chunks of cheese or that kind of stuff and you know it costs like two quid from the chippy so I imagine if they wanted to they could very easily replicate poutine if they did it properly with cheese curds mixed with gravy but I don't think anyone has ever tried to do it over here I've never heard of it I wouldn't even know if it would be possible for me to find like a a frozen ready-made one imported I don't I don't think that would be possible do you know of any good restaurants my mother's a bit of a cook I could pass on a recipe to her one night and like see if she'd be willing to have me around to try that if you, if you know, or maybe your family, someone in your family has a good recipe for poutine, let me know, please, and I'll give it to one of my family members who actually can cook, unlike me, who relies on ovens and microwaves. <laughs> and we'll see. Also, I can feel my nose running and it's bugging the hell out of me. Hay fever is just... Oh, it bugs the hell out of me because it stops me doing what I do. Sorry for a break there, I had to answer the phone. Anyway, where did we leave off? I think it was me complaining about hay fever, for one. And also Red's comment. Generally for important imported things, some are in store but most that we don't have an American brand for are usually an uh, import dedicated store. Also keep up the great work, you're doing an awesome job. Thank you very much. Fraser River is next. I'm in love with the charge. Well actually you commented earlier, but still. I'm in love with the charge blade. I've only got a few hours into Monster Hunter 4 this is. So far I agree, it's amazing. I'll definitely try and get to a Monster Hunter night for some jolly cooperation. I hope you do. I'm actually recording this the day before the next one is due, so, well, you'll be hearing this after the fact, but I hope you made it. Bit of a weird one next. Roller42 asks, are you going to play Five Nights at Freddy's? Pardon me. Um, no, is the short answer. Not into jump scare games. They're not my kind of thing. I've never really, well, I have technically done something like that on the channel because it's for Halloween I played, uh, what did I play for Halloween? What's it called? Ah, I can't remember the name of it. I, I, it'll bug me forever if I don't check. One word. It was the very first hour of I ever did on my channel. Outlast. I blanked on the name. That's as far or as close to a jump scare game you'll get. Although, to be honest, in the Bloodborne playthrough, a couple of things did actually make me jump. But no, a, a pure jump scare simulator. I don't like them. I don't rate them as a horror type of genre. I think Bloodborne is actually a very good example of a horror game done properly, actually. Or a, not a horror game, but a horror, well, I'll get into it if I ever find time to actually do a look out of that. But no, to go back to your question, Five Nights at Freddy's, nope, you'll not see that on my channel. Not for me. CR's brother kind of plays those kind of games. He hasn't done a Five Nights at Freddy's as far as I'm aware. He might do in the future, I don't know. Xavier Mono, Rory got caught. On the topic of import, it's weird. I'm in America, but I live in an Asian neighborhood, and the Asian market a few blocks away has an American foods aisle. <laughs> that is confusing. Meanwhile, a few blocks away from the store, there's a store that sells Ameri American groceries. In that second store, I've seen haggis in the meat section, which I've always wanted to try. Go for it. As I say, as long as you don't read into how it's made, and that's also the traditional way. That's not that's not necessarily the way it's always prepared. Just the traditional way. At the end of the day. It's just lamb with a bunch of spices and because of the way it's cooked, the, the spices infuse it in a, a kind of unique way and that's what haggis is. It's just a little bit spicy and it's not like super spicy either, it's not going to burn your mouth. It's just a, a nice little wee nip as they would say in this country. So if you try it as well, let me know. And you might all convince me to give it a second go in a manner which is not just on a pizza where, you know, whether it's nice tasting or not, the taste is somewhat disguised by the tomato on the, the pizza and what have you. But yeah, give it a go. 
I mean, I don't, I don't recommend it per se, but I wouldn't say be put off from ever trying it purely because of the traditional cooking or creation that goes into it. Like if I ever told you how black pudding was made, you'd never try that, but really it's it's a very stereotypical thing to eat over here. Anyway, G Hunt 123459 has asked a couple of comments. The first one being, have you ever dabbled in Dark Souls PvP? Yes, but never by choice. I don't like the PvP aspect of any Souls game other than Demon's Souls. I actually didn't mind it in that and did do... I did some videos on the PvP of Demon's Souls actually. I'm, the videos are still there if you want to go back and check the playlist for Demon's Souls. I enjoyed it in that. Although in, in Bloodborne I haven't and I wouldn't. In Dark Souls 2 I don't enjoy it and usually just try and steer clear. So no, by choice no, but yes I have taken part. And also who messaged me on Steam? Dragonakis did. Silence you. I am just finishing recording a vlog. And I already shouted happy birthday so you're not getting another shout out. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, G Hunt's other comment. In America, most of our food imports are from Mexico, at least if it's in the stores that I shop at. I don't know if you're like being self-deprecating. No, not. Did I say the right word there? Deprecating. Deprecating, not defecating. I said entirely the wrong thing there. I mean, what kind of things do you import from Mexico that you couldn't get where you are? I'm curious now. I, for some reason, I am. In, I, I just enjoy going down the foreign food aisles of supermarkets now and just seeing stuff that might take my fancy and that's also why I kind of order a Japanese candy as well it's just to see and taste and try things that otherwise I would never do in my entire life it's interesting so yeah I'm curious what kind of things you get from Mexico anyway Jason the Nino who plays games for the story we play them to punch giant blood dogs in the face with a saw cleaver and then you and then Reaver said not another cleaver user sorry Reaper did I say Reaver I think I did most people pick the cleaver because it's the box weapon, that's why. And also, apparently the axe is the best weapon, that's the only one I haven't tried. The cane one is definitely the most stylish, it's very funny. And to finish on, the final comment was from Reaper, another separate one. Enjoying the nice amount of content you're daily, you upload daily, really can't wait to see you stream. The Steam Nights as well, and hopefully you get a foot in the door on Twitch. First things first, just to annoy you, I'm going to use you for the rest of this comment. What is the most buggy game you've had, you have played? Also, stop saying you. Oh, that's what you meant, right. What is the most buggy game you've played? i played a lot of buggy indie games, but I'm assuming you're meaning like AAA. Uh, Arkham Origins, without a doubt, buggy mess of a game at launch. And as far as I'm aware, was never truly fixed either. That's what made that game terrible, awful. Warner Brothers should be ashamed of themselves for that one, quite frankly. Leave it to Rockstead if you know what they're doing. Um, this is related to a number of bugs that have been found in Bloodborne. As far as Bloodborne bugs go, occasionally I lose my echoes, like they're just not there. That happened in a recent part that went live, actually. Um, other than that, one time when I went back to the Hunter's Dream, I couldn't interact with anything. I think that's it. Yeah. I, I haven't come across nearly as many bugs as certain people have. And I definitely don't think there's enough to warrant complaining about it. I think there's a lot of let's pick on Bloodborne going on at the moment because it's PS4 exclusive and people are very salty about the fact it's an exclusive so they are jumping on any little thing and exploding it to make it seem worse than it actually is. Bloodborne has some problems but it's still an exceptionally good game is what I'll say on that for now. And yeah I hope I get the foot in the door on Twitch as well although as a result of um, streaming Killing Floor 2 with CR earlier in the week and I hope you saw the hour of video I did of that. That gave me a first little glance of the, the horrible side of Twitch, the side that thankfully I don't have to deal with on YouTube, that it does exist on YouTube as well. And it's like, oh, if I get popular on Twitch am I going to have to deal with twats like that constantly and try and have to be nice to those people? If people talk to me like the way they were talking to CR, I would have no friends and no viewers on Twitch because I would definitely not sit by and let them do it. Like I compared this once to someone who complained the way about the way Maz was playing Resident Evil. He was saying he was talking too much and not playing enough. If someone said that to me while I was streaming, I would deliberately stand still and challenge them. I would say, oh, is this annoying you? I'll just stand here for five minutes then and I'll talk directly to you. That's the kind of thing I do because I hate letting the viewer think that they have control because they don't. And on Twitch, you really can't let the viewer think that they're in control of you because if you do, they will take a mile for every inch that you give and you have to be very careful with that. On YouTube it isn't quite the same because it's all it's all in comments whereas on Twitch it's live. 
well, you know, 20 second delay, etc. But the interaction with the audience is more or less live. You can't like edit, you can't filter bad words or, you know, racism, etc, etc. So that's why you have to treat Twitch a bit differently than you do to YouTube. And I'm hoping that if I do get known on Twitch, that I'll be able to do it. But I think it's a different kind of beast that's, you don't handle it in the same way you handle YouTube. So I'll be a bit of a neophyte when it comes to that. But anyway, I suppose I should go see what Dragon Akis was doing. Plus this will be running on a little bit. I hope you enjoyed. Come back again next Monday to see another vlog and hopefully I'll have some stuff to show off then. Thank you for your support, patrons, again. And enjoy the rest of the content out later tonight. Till next time, ta-ta for now.